Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the October 26, 2010 meeting of the Glendale City Council. May we have the roll call, please? Council members Draymond? Here. Friedman? Here. Quintero? Here. Weaver? Here. Mayor Najarian? Here. Council member Draymond, would you please lead us in the flag salute? I'd be happy to, Mr. Mayor. If you'd all please stand, place your right hand over your heart, and join me in our pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Remain standing for the invocation that will be del delivered by Rabbi Rick Schechter of Temple Sinai of Glendale. Thank you, Artie. Honorable Mayor, distinguished council members, fellow citizens, let us pray. Dear God, source of life, we pray for the well-being of our Glendale community and our city council. May your blessings rest upon the members of our city council. Grant them a clear vision for our city that is both wise and kind. Guide them in their positions of leadership and responsibility so that our community may be an example of justice and compassion in the world. Deepen our love for our Glendale community and our desire to serve it. Strengthen our power of self-sacrifice for our city's welfare. Teach us to uphold its good name by our own right conduct. And please, cause us to see clearly that the well-being of our community is in the hands of all its citizens. Dear God, we give thanks for the opportunity to serve. May we walk in the light of your presence and use all of our powers for blessing. Amen. May we have your report, please? The agenda for the October 26, 2010 regular meeting of the Glendale City Council was posted on Thursday, October 21, 2010 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Thank you. The next item? Next item is presentation and appointments. At 3A is the agenda preview for the meetings of November 2nd, 2010. Thank you. Ms. Beers. Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, for the Glendale Housing Authority commencing at 2.30 for November 2nd, we have one business agenda item, Director of Community Services and Parks. This is regarding the current status of Glendale's continuum of care. Uh, that afternoon for the Glendale Redevelopment Agency, we have no business agenda items. Uh, we do have a joint public meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Redevelopment Agency. This is the Director's Community Redevelopment and Housing and of Planning regarding Griffith Manor, and Griffith Manor Park Redesign Proposal to add a dog park component. Uh, also that afternoon at 2.30 we have another joint meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Housing Authority. This is the Director of Community Services and Parks regarding bidding results for the construction of the Pacific Park Pool Project in connection with uh, specification number 3423. That evening for the City Council meeting at 6 p.m. For consent items, we have the Director of Community Services and Parks. This is the proposed security fencing at both Brand and Car Parks. Under action items, we have a number of items from the Director of Human Resources, first being the action to resolve an impasse in negotiations between the City of Glendale and the Glendale City Employees Association. Uh, another report regarding amending the classification and compensation resolution for employees of the City of Glendale. Again, the Director of Human Resources, amendment of contract with CalPERS for local miscellaneous members and sworn fire safety members to provide a second tier retirement formula for new hires. Uh, and lastly, Director of Human Resources, this is amendment of contract with CalPERS for local miscellaneous members and swore, sworn fire safety members to provide a second tier retirement formula for new hires as well. And that concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Very much. <clears throat> Next item, please. At 3B is proclamation designating November 7th through the 13th, 2010 as California Retired Teachers Week. Thank you. I have a proclamation that I'm going to ask uh, Council Member Draymond to present uh, to members of the California Retired Teachers Association. And here's my proclamation. Whereas California Retired Teachers Association CRTA, an organization of retired teachers and interested persons, has continuous growth since its founding in 1929. And whereas CRTA, Glendale Foothill Division 11, 
has a current membership of approximately 500, many of whom are active volunteers in the community. And whereas the purpose of CRTA is to support public education, teachers, and provide statewide scholarships, maintain a mutual nonprofit, benevolent and protective organization, safeguard public school teachers' retirement system, promote the welfare and social relationships of its members, support beneficial education legislation, and oppose detrimental legislation, and whereas California Retired Teachers Week was initiated by CRTA to spotlight the extensive volunteer work CRTA members conduct in their local communities, and whereas the purpose of the program is to highlight retired teachers' involvement in education and the community and to provide good role models, I therefore proclaim November 7th through the 13th, 2010, as California Retired Teachers Week and commend the CRTA members for their dedication and valuable contributions over their many years of outstanding service to our youth and to our community. Thank you. Thank you. May I speak? You may speak as soon oh, as you oh, receive you're here. the, the uh, proclamation. Thank you. Thank you hang you. on to that. Congratulations. Hi. Uh, my name is B. Voitilla, and I'm a resident of Glendale, and I represent the Glendale Foothill Division of Retired Teachers. As you said, we have many members who devote thousands of volunteer hours. We're honored to be here and for you to proclaim California Retired Teachers Week. We have selected Pat Ganji to receive the proclamation. Pat has served as our past president of our organization, and uh, president of her PEO chapter and Delta Kappa Gamma Society chapter. She has worked over 60 years with Job's Daughters, a Masonic youth organization. She represents us. Prior to retiring uh, from Glendale schools, she taught for the Air Force in England, Germany, Spain, and for the Navy in the Philippines. So she's had a lot of experience. But a very personal note of interest, her family came to Glendale in the 1870s. One great-grandfather's farm was where this city hall now sits. Uh, the other great-grandfather bought the land from the Verdugo family, from the Verdugo Mountains to Glendale College, he donated the land of Verdugo Park to the city of Glendale. Pat continues to give volunteer hours to the local elementary schools, and she'll present this proclamation to the Board of Education next week. And uh, we thank you for allowing us to be here, and thank you for the proclamation. Pat, say a word. Thank you very much. I feel at home since literally right here was where my great-grandfather's farm was. And then they moved to the outskirts of Glendale, which is where Sears is now. <laughs> <laughs> and they went all the way through Glendale schools, both my mother and father. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. So, Mr. Mayor, I guess the question then is, if we've moved from cows to council on this very site, is that progress? <laughs> Something to ponder, Mr. Drain. Something to ponder. <laughs> Next item, please. Item number four, City Council and staff comments. Okay, before I go to my colleagues, I have two, um, two unfortunate uh, and untimely uh, passings that I'd like to report on and request that we uh, adjourn our meeting in the memory of these two individuals. Uh, the first one is Arnold Milner. Arnold Milner was a person who worked behind the scenes to make our community a better place, but he was never afraid to press an issue if he thought it was important. He had a lifelong commitment to youth in our community and continued to serve as scoutmaster for the Boy Scout troop that he joined as a boy, participating until recently in their camping trips and high Sierra hikes. Ar Arnold Milner passed away Monday night after a short illness. But Arnold had two interests that have forever improved our community. He and his wife, Benet, raised their three sons in southern Glendale, and as a result, he got involved in the effort to address the problem of graffiti in our community long before it became fashionable. In this spirit, he was a founding member of the Knockout Graffiti in Glendale Committee, which developed Glendale's first graffiti response program and the city's zero-tolerance policy, 
which are the primary reasons that Glendale does not now have the graffiti problem that plagues our neighbors. As a volunteer in this effort, there was never a job that he refused to undertake. In one other area, Arnold's community interests have made a difference that most of us now take for granted. He was the first champion of doing anything possible to get abandoned shopping carts off the sidewalks throughout town. He was relentless in pressing this issue, even when no one else seemed to care. Through his perseverance, Glendale did adopt a program that was immediately effective, as Arnold knew it would be, making us once again an example for our neighboring cities. Arnold actively participated on Glendale Clean and Beautiful, serving twice as chair. His pride in Glendale was evident when he accepted the top honors by Keep America Beautiful on behalf of our city during his chairmanship. Services will be Thursday, October 28th at 11 a.m. at Mount Sinai Memorial Park, Hollywood Hills. The family has requested that remembrances or gifts honoring Arnold's many contributions to the community be made to Glendale Clean and Beautiful Incorporated, a nonprofit corporation established to benefit environmental education and the beautification of Glendale. The second passing is Mr. Harutun Yaretsian, owner and co-founder of Abriel Bookstore. Harut, as he was known to his friends and the public, was a ubiquitous figure on the Los Angeles Armenian scene. The Abriel Bookstore, which he had started with his late brother, Nubar, had become a kind of literary club in the Los Angeles area. He was a graduate of Hovagimian Manukian School in Beirut, Lebanon, and continued his studies in the dramatic arts in Yerevan, Armenia, where he, where he obtained his degree in stage directing. Abriel Bookstore opened in Hollywood, in the heart of a young Armenian community in Los Angeles, but over the years, as the community moved to more upscale neighborhoods, Harut relocated his store as well to Glendale, right on Broadway and Jackson, where it has become a focal point for Armenian writers from all over the world to come, discuss literature and the arts with fellow intellectuals. He worked closely with the city's library system in promoting Armenian-themed events and raising awareness about Armenian literature. Harut participated regularly in the Los Angeles Times annual Festival of Books. His passing leaves a void in the community and he will be dearly missed by his patrons, friends, and family. He is survived by his wife, Sirun Yaretsian, a prominent artist, and their son, Arno. We will adjourn in both of these gentlemen's memories. One note, Mr. Mayor, um, uh, that is I would like to remind the public about the well, it's a, the, the, the annual event is in its more than 30th iteration. I don't remember the numbers, whether it's 34 or 35th. Um, Montrose Halloween Spooktacular, their trick-or-treat event on uh, Sunday, uh, Halloween night. Uh, the merchants in the Montrose Shopping Park uh, ask families to bring their kids, and they trick-or-treat from store to store you know, throughout the 200 or so businesses that are there, and they will uh, have their doors open to uh, uh, provide treats for the trick-or-treaters. There's usually thousands, in fact, usually at least 10,000 that turn out for this. It's quite quite the event, and it's a nice place to be able to bring your children for a, a very safe environment. So uh, we encourage you to uh, visit the merchants up in Montrose for that event. And that is from 5 p.m. until 8 p.m. Uh, in the Montrose Shopping Park. And I think this year there are there are uh, the Montrose Bounce Company, I think, has rides there in the 2200 block. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Friedman. Well, it was a typically busy week in Glendale this week. Just a few um, events um, that I attended, and I'm sure a lot of you did too, um, in no particular order. This weekend was the annual Kiwanis Duck Splash. And even if you didn't attend it, if you drove up or down Verdugo, I'm sure you saw the giant, I think it's two-story, inflatable duck. Uh, it was a great event. Lots of money was raised to help the kids in our community. Um, it was a lot of fun for everyone who attended, especially the little kids who get so incredibly excited every time the ducks go flying down their watery track. I saw my colleagues there so, and a lot of members of the community, so I want to congratulate the Kiwanis on another wonderful event. Um, also this weekend, Silvana Gallery, which is at 1731 Glen Oaks, is a relatively new art gallery in Glendale, had a terrific opening of California Impressionist work. And it's a great exhibit that covers 
painting and sculpture and jewelry and really just all of the different artistic mediums. It's going to be running for a while, I think at least for a month, and I recommend that anybody who is at all an art lover go up and, and see this wonderful exhibit. So again, that's 1731 Glen Oaks, and they're on the second floor, and it's Sylvana Gallery. Um, also last week, the Glendale um, Commission for the Status of Women had their annual candlelight vigil for domestic violence awareness. And it was a really moving event attended by a lot of members of the community and also by the former victims of domestic violence who have sought out help and, and changed their lives. And they're such an inspiration for women in the community who are in similar situations to see that there are women who not only are able to overcome and to thrive, but then come out to support other women. So it was at the YWCA. They just they do a wonderful job, and um, it was great to see everyone there. Um, our mayor, Arun Ajarian, was there and spoke, and Paula Devine, who's in the audience, was also there speaking, and it was a really moving event. And last but not least, last night there was a community meeting for the Glendale Safe and Healthy Streets program, and I see Collins here, so I think he's going to talk about it. But I want to thank the members of the community who came out to talk about how we can make our streets safer for pedestrians and bicyclists. It was really great to see members of the community out and giving their input and, and being so interested in the topic. So thanks to everyone who came out for that, and hopefully I'll see more of our community members at tomorrow night's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Mr. Quintero, anything to report? Just celebrated my 41st anniversary and uh, been out of town for a couple of weeks, so it's great to be back. Great. Very good. I have a couple things to report on. Uh, we did have the third installment of the Glendale Glory uh, boxing event at the Civic Auditorium. This, uh, I think it was this Friday night, this past Friday, and it, everything uh, that I observed seemed to indicate that it was again being run and, and managed in a very uh, professional and orderly manner. Uh, there were some very interesting uh, boxing uh, matches uh, that were held. This afternoon, we held the groundbreaking for the Doran Gardens, which is a 60-unit uh, ownership affordable uh, housing uh, neighborhood, let's call it. I hate to use the word housing project. Uh, we're going to have one, two, three, and four-bedroom units, as well as preserving the three craftsman homes uh, which are up on blocks right now because they're getting moved around, those will be at market rate. So if you're in the market for a craftsman home, it's going to be uh, restored uh, brilliantly. Uh, stick around in about uh, 14 or 15 months. We may have something ready for you. Um, in the paper last week, uh, Friday, I believe, it was reported that I was going to be making a motion at the MTA uh, asking for an accounting on the cost of the 710 tunnel. And I thought that was a very reasonable motion to make, uh, but I did predict that it would be running into some difficulty through the powers that be, and certainly it did. Uh, that was an understatement, that my motion was uh, unceremoniously uh, pulled, redacted, and withdrawn from the MTA's agenda uh, on Friday by the supporters of the 710 tunnel. Uh, I'm furious about it. I'm hoping that the LA Times reporter that I've been speaking to uh, and the Glendale News Press reporter, actually, who has the scoop, uh, will be able to report on it. Uh, of course, we're all afraid that it's going to turn into another big dig, uh, and we applaud the vision of Governor Christie of New Jersey who saw that such a tunnel for his state, even though it was a transit tunnel, was just too expensive, and he pulled the plug on it. Uh, the last thing I'd like to mention is uh, along the lines of our discussion last week on how to make uh, Glendale safer for pedestrians, uh, I think we all received an email from uh, uh, my friend. I actually, I'm on the swim team with his wife, uh, Andres Castano, Castana, uh, who sent me a photo from Bogota, Colombia. Artie, do we have that? We do. And uh, it's a very simple, um, a simple application of paint. Um, on the larger screen. It's on the large screen, folks. What you see are diamonds on the roadway. These diamonds are painted. 
uh, wherever a pedestrian fatality has occurred. Uh, I'm not sure if this meets the uniform uh, roadway design policy book, but uh, they obviously have a lot of pedestrian problems in Bogota. I think at the very least uh, this may serve as a reminder to drivers on our Glendale streets that uh, someone has lost his or her life uh, at this spot and may cause them to slow down. All it takes is a bucket of paint and a stencil, and hopefully we can install these. And Mr. Zern, uh, please consider this when we go through our list of um, – we ask you to come back when you go through the list of uh, tools that we can use to help the pedestrian problem. Um, thank you. And that's all I have. Uh, any comments from staff? Okay. Let's move on, please. Next on the agenda is the consent items at 5. The, con the following are routine and may be acted upon by one motion. Any member of council or the audience requesting separate consideration may do so by making such request before a motion is proposed. There was one request submitted to pull item 5D. Okay, so 5A, B, and C are on the table. Will Fair someone call. make a motion? I'll move the remainder. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. There needs to be one abstention for, I believe, Council Member Friedman. Okay. Noting that abstention. Council members Draymon? Yes. Friedman? Yes. With the abstention, correct? Yes. Thank you. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Najarian? Yes. 5D, please, if you'll read that into the record. 5D is General Manager of Glendale Water and Power regarding repair and overhaul of two free turbines and one combustion gas turbine for unit number BC. At D1 is resolution authorizing the purchasing manager to negotiate and enter into service authorization agreement with Wood Group Pratt and Whitney Industrial Turbine Services, LLC, for a total price of $2,710,000 plus, uh, a 15% contingency, and at D2 is a resolution appropriating $3,116,500. Thank you. Margaret Hammond. Good evening, Your Honor, members of the Council. City staff and audience, my name is Margaret Hammond. I just have uh, some questions a friend of mine wanted me to ask, and um, I said I would do so uh, in the interest of uh, local uh, employment, um, employees possible. Uh, in the first place, will you be bringing in people from outside the city to do this work? Where will they be coming from? Uh, are they going to be from a foreign country, uh, another state? Uh, and why are we not using people? There are approximately 1,200 people, I understand, who are quite capable of doing this work, and we do need to look after our own economy in the city and not be um, taking uh, or letting our money go outside the city. Uh, and will these people be properly licensed? That's another thing. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Starbird, can you? You'd like to, if you'd like to have some response, Steve Linz, uh, Assistant General Manager with uh, Glendale Water and Power. Steve, can you give some response? Mr. Mayor, members of um, Council, Steve Linz, Assistant General Manager for GWP. There is one facility in the country that's capable of making these repairs, and it's in Connecticut. Um, that's where the turbines are, that's where they were dismantled for uh, inspection, and that's where we plan on having the work done. Okay. Um, perhaps Margaret has some other information that we're not aware of, uh, if you wouldn't mind speaking to her. As Steve notes, this isn't something you do with local labor, frankly. This is very technical stuff, very large stuff. That's what I was... Well, the company the turbine, that, gas right, turbine, right, and the company engine. is Pratt and Whitney, which is a famous aviation company, it's been around forever. Yeah. We should notice a U.S. company, so we would presume the work is done here in the U.S. Done in Connecticut. Yeah. Okay. If there's any other questions, if not, the United Five D. Second. second. Roll call, please. Council members, Draymond. Yes. Friedman. Yes. Harrow. Yes. Weaver? Aye. Aaron Najarian? Yes. Next item, please. Next item would be oral communications. Okay, this is the three minute portion of oral communications open to individuals who'd like to make announcements of uh, general community interest. 
uh, Paula Devine, followed by Philip Toyotome, and Diane Acosta. Thank you, Mayor Najarian, City Council, and staff. I'm here on behalf of the Commission on the Status of Women. As has been stated, this month of October is domestic violence awareness for the um, Commission. We started the month with our Commission Project Rescue Grant to the Glendale Police Department. This last week, as mentioned by Councilwoman uh, Friedman, we held our vigil, annual vigil, with uh, the YWCA, and I'd like to thank Councilwoman Friedman and Mayor Najarian for being there. It was it's very nice of you to take the time. Um, I know it meant a lot to those that were there. And we're going to conclude our month with a special teen dating violence forum. It's going to be held um, at the Center Library on Louise and Harvard. It's what parents and teens need to know about abusive relationships. Um, being a former teacher and actually being retired, it um, kind of makes me proud to be here tonight on uh, seeing these uh, gals get the, uh, the commendation. But anyway, I know that this happens. Teen violence, dating abuse happens in high school. And so we're inviting um, all the parents out there that are listening and watching that have teens to bring your sons and your daughters to this forum. Uh, we've invited Dr. Levy, Barry Levy from UCLA. She's with the Women's Studies Department and she has a, a book that she's written and it's called In Love and in Danger, A Teen Guide to Breaking Free of Abusive Relationships. And uh, we're trying to get a dialogue started between parents and teens and teens and friends. We are doing this with the Glendale Unified School District, and the wonderful thing about this is they are trying to get this into their curriculum so that we will actually have in the elementary school, Hands and Words Are Not for Hurting, the anti-violence program, and for Red Ribbon Week, which is right now, we will have hopefully a teen um, dating violence curriculum so that we can help teens understand the signs, symptoms of an abusive relationship and know what a healthy relationship should be and what to do if their friends or themselves, if they get into pr trouble, what they can do about it. We will have bookmarks which are going to be distributed throughout the um, district to every teen in the Glendale School District, which will have information on, on uh, violence, dating violence, and also information on who to contact and what to do if you end up in a relationship like that. So once again, it is Thursday, day after tomorrow, the 28th, 7 p.m. at the Center Library. It is free, and we invite everyone to be there. Mothers, grandmothers, bring your teens, and fathers, Bring your sons and your daughters. Everyone's invited. We think it's going to be a very worthwhile forum. Thank you. Thank you. Philip Toyotome, followed by Diana Costa, and then Colin Boger. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Uh, my name is Philip Toyotome, and I am here tonight representing the Kenneth Village Merchant Association one of the five merchant associations that are supported by the city of Glendale. Our, our association represents 44 merchants local to Kenneth Village, a quaint cluster of small shops, restaurants, and service businesses located at Kenneth and Grandview in western Glendale. We have the support of and are under the care of our local city councilman, Mr. John Draymond who apparently has a monopoly on uh, Halloween events. But I would like to take just a moment to make you aware of and invite you to attend one of our many community events, the annual, our annual harvest, um, fall harvest festival, which will be held this Saturday, as you can see our flyer, October 30th in the center of Kenneth Village. The Harvest Festival runs from 11 o'clock a.m. in the morning until three in the afternoon. There will be uh, pumpkin decorating, train and pony rides, a painting zoo, face painting, art activities, clowns and jumpers, lots of foods and ref food and refreshments, live entertainment, and of course, lots of candy, goodies to be given out to the kids. A festive costume uh, contest will wind down our event with the winners announced at 2 o'clock or so in the afternoon. In the past, this event has been one of our most popular functions with scores of our community families coming out to take part in this very fun and festive 
atmosphere. We know that each one of you have many responsibilities and a very busy schedule. But if you are available to drop by, even just for a minute or two, we are confident that you would be impressed by both the appeal of the festival and especially by the warmth and friendliness of our very small Kenneth Village community. In summary, my visit to you tonight held two main goals. Goal number two was to invite you to attend our Fall Harvest Festival, of course, and again, we do wish that you could join us this Saturday for just a short time. But in addition, goal number one was to thank you on behalf of our Kenneth Village Merchant Association for your continued support <coughs> uh, of you council members and the city of Glendale. As all of you know, but others might not be aware, the city supports each of the five community merchant associations of Glendale with annual funding approved by the city council to host and pr promote community family activities like this one. So, so lastly, in closing, the Harvest Festival is this Saturday from 11 to 3 in the afternoon. And whether you can join us or not, we are all very grateful to you council members for recognizing the needs of our community and for your continued support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Draymond. Oh, I just wanted to comment. Um, Philip, this is a wonderful event. I, I think all of us have gone to at least one of them. It's a terrific event. If you have the time and you aren't otherwise engaged for Saturday, this is a not only a good event, but it's a our neighborhood, we're blessed in this city with some great neighborhood business districts. And Kenneth Village is uh, a unique setting with a flavor that is just all its own. Take a drive over. It's easy to park, easy to get in. The stores are mom and pop businesses, sole proprietorships. Each store has a unique character. Uh, and like all of our neighborhood business districts, of course, they can all use uh, 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 a little help uh, in their stores with uh, you opening your wallet while you're there. There's a lot of interesting stores, unique businesses and restaurants to visit while you're there, uh, whether it's the, the bakery or, or the restaurant or the, uh, the various shops there. And the event itself is a lot of fun. So please do put it on your agenda if you're not otherwise engaged on the 30th. Thank you. Diane Acosta? Followed by Colin Bogart. I say good evening, uh, Your Honor, Council members, and staff. And uh, my name is Diana Costa. I am here representing the Glendale Philharmonic Orchestra. And I would like to take this time first off to thank you very much for your support in welcoming us and our orchestra to the community of Glendale this last year for our inaugural season. And we are happy to announce that we are continuing a second season, and that begins November 7th with a Positive Motions concert series opening the Glendale Philharmonic Orchestra. Our event is, um, we are uh, actually, well, we have part of the poster. <laughs> um, it's going to be uh, the Carmen Suite by Bizet uh, under the baton of Mikhail Avitasen, our conductor. We will also um, have um, other. Uh, other, uh, I'm sorry. We'll have the premiere for the, uh, Los Angeles for uh, the Armenian folk tunes arranged by Ruben Altunian for a Dudek and Orchestra featuring soloist Ruben Haratunian, uh, cello concerto by J.C. Bach featuring soloist Ruslan Biryukov, who is also our founder of our orchestra. Many of you know, I'm sure, by now. And uh, also Sonata for String Orchestra Number no. 2 by Rossini. Uh, we will also feature a guest appearance by the Glendale Youth Orchestra, which is starting their 22nd um, season. And we're really looking forward to having them on board with us. They will, we don't know what they're performing. It's a surprise to us, so we're going to say surprise piece of music at this point. And I'm sure uh, I would like to invite you all and the city of Glendale to our opening concert and our following six concert series and uh, many more, hopefully, in the future. And uh, we look forward to having you there. And um, we're so glad that you've enjoyed our music so far. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Colin Bogart, followed by Leon Mayer. 
Mayor Najarian, Council Members, uh, City Staff, good evening. My name is Colin Bogart. I work for the LA County Bicycle Coalition, uh, working here in Glendale on the Safe and Healthy Streets Project. And as Council Member Friedman mentioned, we had a meeting last night, um, and I'd like to thank you, Council Member Friedman, for attending that meeting. Um, as part of the Safe and Healthy Streets Project, we are creating what, what we've, uh, the, uh, my city partners and I have uh, labeled the Safe and Healthy Streets Plan. This is a document that seeks to encourage and support walking and biking in the city of Glendale through a set of policy recommendations that uh, we will eventually be presenting to the city for consideration. And right now, uh, we're in the process of collecting public feedback on this draft document. We had uh, one public meeting last Last night, and we'll have another public meeting tomorrow evening at the Spar Heights Community Center, Wednesday, October 27th, from 7 to 8:30 p.m. Everybody is welcome. Uh, I would like to invite any of you, if you can attend, please do. And anybody uh, watching at home, anybody in the community, is uh, encouraged to attend this meeting if they can to uh, give us their feedback on this document. Uh, you can find more details uh, about the Safe and Healthy Streets plan at uh, our website, la-bike.org slash Glendale. Uh, there is a PDF version of the document that people can download. Um, it is a pretty lengthy document, uh, and if people wish to submit written uh, responses at a later date, or if they can't attend tomorrow evening, they're more than welcome to do that as well. Uh, they can do that by contacting me directly at Colin at la-bike.org. Uh, any questions, people can call 818-334-9731, or once again, they can go to the website la-bike.org slash Glendale, and that will be tomorrow evening at 7 p.m at the Spar Heights Community Center. Thank you very much. Thank you. Beyond Mayor. Good evening, Mayor Dejerian, members of the Council and staff. My name is Leon Mayor. I'm here tonight on behalf of the Glendale Library as well as the Kiwanis of Glendale and the Friends of the Library who have co-sponsored the One Book, One Glendale event. And it's coming to an end tomorrow night uh, we've been doing this for the last month, and it's been a great event, and the last will be the best. Six o'clock tomorrow, we will have Pat Morrison talking about her book, uh, Rio L.A., Tales of the L.A. River. And anybody who doesn't know who Pat Morrison is hasn't been reading The Times for the last ten years. And uh, Denise Hamilton, uh, who is behind uh, the L.A. Noir. Her book, uh, L.A. Noir, and Denise Hamilton will be there. Uh, she's been kind of the star of this event. She's been there a couple of times already. And she'll be there at 6 o'clock. Get there early because we're having a book signing at 6 o'clock and then kind of a book discussion at 6.30. That's not all. 7 o'clock, Hector Tovar, L.A. Times political advisor, who will be talking about his book, uh, the uh, Tattoo Soldier. It's a political novel, but it's great. Hector Tovar, anybody who hasn't heard of him hasn't been reading The Times. And in addition to him, we'll have Gary Phillips uh, taking us to Skid Row to talk about The Underbelly. This is another novel by a well-known uh, L.A. author. So these are events that you have to be there. That's 7 o'clock. Uh, is the second series of events, and of course Denise Hamilton will be there to have a discussion with he Hector T Tovar and Gary Phillips. Now, parking is validated, but please try to be there on time. If you forget about my announcement tonight, look at the uh, uh, news press. We're happy that the news press has cooperated with uh, Joyce Rudolph giving us coverage for these various events. We're having a Halloween uh, book sale Saturday and Sunday. The, the one, this is on the, behind the library at the uh, uh, area where the uh, books are, the driveway there. The, and uh, that will be both Saturday and Sunday. Great bargains. Book sale. These are people have donated their books and sometimes the the library weans out its books. That, that uh, event is headed by 
Uh, Peter Bruckheimer, one of our board members, he's a retired from the JPL lab. Uh, we've had other people, if I have a few seconds, real quick to mention uh, uh, Mary Alice Wallam, Chuck White, and Pat Sider from the library who've worked on this event as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anahid Panajian. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Najarian, members of the City Council staff. My name is Anahid Panajian. I am happy to make this announcement. The first annual Glendale Health Festival, presented by the Armenian American Medical Society of California in collaboration with the City of Glendale Community Services and Parks, that will be held will be soon Saturday, November 6, 2010, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Pacific Community Center, 540 South Pacific Avenue. This festival is free and open to the entire community including food, entertainment, activities, education. Many physicians with different specialists will provide free medical screening and health education for the whole family, high blood pressure screening, obesity and nutrition advice, cancer awareness and screening, diabetes education, health disease, heart disease, bone health, breast and cervical cancer screening, and etc. Uh, free medical screening and health education and counseling will guide patients to make smarter health and lifestyle choices. Thank you again, and I hope to see anyone who wishes to come at that program welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't have any other cards for this portion of oral communications, so I will close it. Sorry. Uh, for the oral, for the announcements, there's two portions. There's one for the um, general public comment for three minutes. Announcements, sorry, general public ge announcements of general public interest, and then we've got the five-minute version, which comes at the end. So perhaps you submitted it for the five-minute version. Um, and let's move on to the next item. Next item at 7 on the uh, agenda is adoption of ordinances. At 7A is ordinance amending sections 13.08.20, 13.08.030, 13.08.050, and 13.08.150 of the Glendale Municipal Code 1995 relating to water rates. This was offered on October 12, 2010 by Councilmember Weaver to be further continued to uh, November 9th. Okay, we did, uh, we did hold a public hearing two weeks ago on this. Uh, we took uh, testimony and statements from the public. I did close the public hearing. I'm not inclined to reopen it at this point. However, of course, uh, it, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, I'm, yes. This is, this is the one noted on the agenda. We're continuing we to November 9th. Oh, I see. Okay. Sorry. Um, the other one has Aaron. been read in the record. Yet. Right. Okay, so anyone here who wanted to listen to us discuss the water rates, um, the public hearing was closed two weeks ago. I will not intend to open it on November 9th when we hear it again. Uh, however, you're welcome to listen to the council debate and uh, use their persuasive skills to get the votes one way or the other. Uh, 7B, please. 7B is ordinance amending sections 30. Point oh, actually, hey, let I'm me sorry. Ask. Yeah, Mr. Can we have a mo formal motion to continue that without further public notice to November 9th? So moved. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Motion, as I heard, it was moved by Council Member Weaver and seconded by Council Member Quintero. Council Member Strayman? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Najarian? Yes. 7B, please. I can ask the city attorney, do I have to read all the numbers into the record, or can I say as listed on the agenda? Uh, you can say all listed as listed on the agenda, but you have to read the, the motion into the Absolutely. record. Absolutely. At 7B is ordinance amending the sections as listed on the agenda uh, of the Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code 1995 and adding the section 
30.30.050 to Title 30 of the Glendale Municipal Code relating to solar energy equipment, Option 2C. This was offered on October 19, 2010 by Councilmember Weaver. And the motion. Motion. And the motion is at B1, motion designating staff to work with the California League of Cities or other affected cities, the city's state lobbyist, and or the members of the legislature that represent the city of Glendale to seek an amendment to government code section 65850.5 to clarify its scope and applicability. Okay. Um, and let me reiterate what I mentioned earlier regarding the water rate motion. Uh, we did hold a public hearing on this uh, last week. Uh, we took testimony from the public. Uh, documents, and I did close the public hearing, and absent a strong uh, voicing of opposition from my colleagues, I'm going to uh, maintain that the public hearing be closed uh, and leave it to the, uh, again, to, to us on the dais to discuss, and perhaps uh, if there's any remaining questions, we're certainly... Uh, You're ready, Mr. Mayor, I'll move 7B1. 7B first. So, you know, two separate? Yeah, two separate motions, one for 7B and then one for 7B1. 7B. Second. Okay, and, and then let me first, uh, before I get in, there was a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Peer and Mr. Clem, uh, I, I do have your cards indicating your desire to speak on this issue, but I'm going to uh, have to hold them off. Roll call? Okay, no, not roll call. Um, I just want to let my colleagues know that I did have a discussion today with the uh, Deputy Attorney General, Deborah Slan, um, and I inquired as to her, uh, her authority to issue her opinion. Uh, if you remember, her opinion came in a letter saying that Glendale has no authority uh, to implement our proposed restrictions on the solar panel installations, et cetera. Um, she, she did admit and she did, uh, I guess, corroborate what uh, the city attorney said is that she is not in the branch of the attorney general's office that issues opinions which can be used as similar to court opinions, judicial opinions, to direct, um, to direct uh, anyone who's interested. However, she is a member of the enforcement division, of the environmental enforcement division. Uh, although she did not threaten me, she said that in... You know, in no uncertain terms, she feels that if Glendale passes the ordinance as, as proposed, that we will be overstepping our legal authority and treading on the, uh, the purview and the jurisdiction of the state legislature. Um, she indicated that she has no opinion one way or the other whether the state legislature overstepped their bounds, created too broad of an ordinance, or whether Glendale, uh, our intentions to uh, create orderly development and construction is out of line. But she said uh, she's dealt the cards. Her cards that are dealt is the ordinance, the government code that was passed by the legislature. She indicated she would be likely, I said, well, what would you do if a hypothetical city passed a, <laughs> a hypothetical ordinance? She said uh, they would enter in litigation, they would seek an injunction, and either move for declaratory relief or seek efforts to halt Glendale and any other city, or this hypothetical city, from pursuing it. They have to have uniformity throughout the state in the application of the solar uh, whatever that ordinance was called, the Solar Freedom Ordinance? or Solar Rights Act. Solar, Solar Rights Act. Um, and um, I don't think she's kidding. I mean, I'll be honest with you. And, and she says, you know, she was a little bit surprised that the city attorney didn't, uh, you know, set forth more of a, a firm argument uh, objecting to the passage of these zoning ordinances, which clearly, in her opinion, fly in the face of the Solar Rights Act. So I'm just going to ask my colleagues, uh, you know, this is a state ordinance that we have to follow, in my opinion. It clearly sets forth uh, that this is an issue of statewide concern and not local or municipal interest. Uh, as much as we want to regulate uh, construction and design and placement of structures, 
uh, we have our hands tied because it is such an important issue regarding the generation of electricity and power in the state. So I would urge you, let's, let's think about this and let's not go down this path where we have to enter into litigation with the Attorney General uh, and the State of California. Ms. Friedman. Well, I certainly don't want to go into litigation with the State of California over this. I'm wondering if we were to ask for an official opinion stating our concerns, you know, and giving them sort of solid examples of what our concerns are and what we're afraid of, whether we could get sooner rather than later some clarity back from them and hopefully give us the information that we need to make a decision one way or the other. And I would support waiting for that if it's not months and months and months. If we think we can get an answer from them quickly, then maybe that's what we should do. Any idea about that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, Council Member Friedman, um, we would have to make a formal request through uh, one of our um, legislators, state legislators that represents Glendale. Um, and it does take a while. It does take, in my experience, it's taken nine months to a year to get a, a response back from the opinion use unit. Um, so it, I've, never seen it, uh, I've never seen it come back in less than uh, that amount of time. Um, so so I, I can't, other than that, I can't, I can't really provide an answer. Mr. Weaver. Well, considering the mockery that our legislators do in running the state of California um, in every way, this was faulty legislation put together. I believe talked to one of our representatives already in the legislature saying good thought was not put into this ordinance, uh, stating that uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, in essence, throughout all the zoning regulations of our city, and having to allow somebody to put solar panels wherever they want to put them, anywhere on their property, on the hillsides, anywhere. I said I would never vote that for the city I was raised in. Nope. I talked with the legislator and I said, you've got to look at that ordinance and consider amending it. They passed it too quick. Let's see, what do they say when uh, the day the budget was signed, last day there was... Um, Eight, nine hundred bills on his desk. He's supposed to read and decide whether he's going to support or not. Rush everything through at the end. Bing, bing, bang. No thought process going on up there in legislature at all. And while I, we put in here on, I think, B1 to get an opinion, we also said we're going to talk to our legislators. And that might be the quicker route uh, than an opinion because I think if the legislators understand the impacts to every city in the state by being overzealous, they will rein it in to some degree. So I'm willing, the city has to go to court in the meantime, I'm willing to do it because I will never vote to uh, give freedom to anybody to do as they uh, please in this city. If I may, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Garcia. Uh, just to jump ahead to the 7B1, it, and it, it's encompassed in there regarding maybe working with the League of Cities and our state, the state legislators to uh, seek an amendment. Um, if it's the council's desire, we can also include in that the request to seek the Attorney General's opinion and sort of run both tracks at the same time. Yes. Uh, just our opinion, uh, requesting the Attorney General's opinion was, one, would be the length of time to do that, and then, two, sort of the impact that would have um, if we did that on our own as opposed to working with the other cities to try to, who are impacted and try to get a result that way. But obviously it's within the council purview to, as part of that motion, to direct us to seek the Attorney General's opinion. At the same time, we're trying to work with the cities and the legal cities uh, to get a legislative uh, solution. A legislative. And, I, and I would add that, um, you know, obviously we're, we, as we stated before, we are aware of the argument, the, the strong legal arguments that we would be preempted. Uh, however, we just noted that there there could be two reasonable interpretations of that statute. And if you look at the legislative history, it, it wasn't really – the purpose was not to – from our perspective, didn't seem to preempt all zoning, but really to pre prevent the discretionary type of review. Um, this is just – in my opinion, this is just two uh, good faith, reasonable uh, views of the statute. And um, I don't think either side has any various purpose in sort of uh, pushing the, the issue one way or the other. The legislator that I talked to couldn't believe it when I told him what that law would permit. Couldn't believe it. That means we've got to get to our representatives up there and explain. Look, look at this. Take a hard look, along with working in the League of California Cities and everybody else. 
dual track opinion and the other. Mr. Draymond. Well, um, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, if we were to vote on this today and to pass it, that the next step would not be litigation anyhow. Uh, the next step would be uh, someone bringing it to their attention. Uh, the next step would be them making a decision, and the next step would be them notifying us about the ordinance in some way or other. It wouldn't be, we pass this, the next step litigation. Uh, so I would be very happy to, uh, to vote on, this, on these two uh, items tonight and add to one or both of them um, the issue of requesting a, uh, a, an opinion, a dual track, in other words, and we'll get an answer. And in fact, uh, even if we didn't have a dual track, and if this were to find support and, and were to pass this evening, uh, we would certainly hear eventually from them, and, and we would have a, a, our interpretation, because they would, they would uh, under the scenario that this representative uh, made to you, uh, would uh, certainly bring it to our attention, and, and they would have to have a ruling, wouldn't they? in order to uh, tell us that our, well, an opinion, excuse me, in order to, uh, to give us a, uh, in essence, a, a Well, uh, Council Member Draymond, the, I, I don't know if they would actually bring a lawsuit. They, you know, there are a lot of issues with that. They may wait till a citizen uh, raises the issue. But um, the, the civil litigation branch of the Attorney General's office could bring a suit before waiting for their opinions unit to issue a formal opinion. The impact of the of the legal opinion or the opinion from the Attorney General's office is that it's published. Uh, it is citable as persuasive precedent, but not binding in a court. So the court wouldn't be bound by it, but would look at it for for persuasive authority. And so it would have the effect of not only impacting Glendale but other cities who may regulate in this area. Okay. Uh, if there's no other comment, we have a motion. Um, the, the ordinance will be. 7B. 7B, and we'll have a separate motion. 7B1. Right. Okay, so your your motion was for the ordinance, B's. correct? 7B. Yes. And there was a second by Mr. Quintero? Yes. Okay. Roll call, please. Council Member Strayman? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Najarian? No. I'll move 7B1. With the... Uh, with the addition of... Dual track with the dual attorney, attorney, general. General. The attorney general's office. Second. Roll call, please. Council members Draymond? Yes. Friedman? Yes. Montero? Yes. Weaver? Aye. Mayor Najarian? Uh, before, we, before we close that, um, let me just re refer to the city attorney. I turned away two speakers who were, I was presuming, addressing the ordinance. Uh, they could potentially wish to speak to the motion that we just made. If they have something new to add. Was okay, I don't want to violate the Brown Act by. Uh, yes, is my vote on that. Thank you. Next item. At AD. Oh, wait, did we vote? We just did. I stopped it right before my. Oh. Yes, everyone voted aye I on it. Okay, on 7B1. Yes. 7B1 passed with the amendment. Losing it. Next item, please. Item number eight. At 8A, under action items, the city manager regarding seeking council direction on the proposed merger of the Departments of Community Redevelopment and Housing and Community Planning to form the Department of Community Development. Authorization from council is needed to proceed with the steps necessary to implement the merger in an effort to better align and coordinate the current and long-range planning function with the economic development, redevelopment, and housing development functions. At 8A1 is a motion directing staff. Mr. Starbird. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council, thank you very much. It has been just a little over a year ago that the City Council approved my recommendation that we restructure the Departments of Parks and Recreation and Community Services, Development Services, and Planning to incorporate the various operational functions previously in community development and housing to form the three departments today that we call the Department of Community Services and Parks, the Community Planning Department, and the Community Redevelopment and Housing Department. Over the past several months, uh, I have to say that I've been tremendously proud of the 
way in which the staff of the three departments and the operations previously in community development housing have really worked together uh, to bring the three new departments to fruition and, and really make this a seamless uh, transition. And I think it has shown the advantages of, of uh, pairing the various operations the way that I had recommended. In watching the operations over the past several months, though, I've, I've begun to feel that with the challenges that we face in the horizon and, frankly, the opportunities that we face as we recover uh, from the economic downturn, there's a need to really place an emphasis on, in various areas, building a vision uh, for where we need to proceed, uh, especially in the area of planning, redevelopment, and housing. Uh, redevelopment and housing has done a tremendous job over the last number of years, uh, particularly in the area of implementation, uh, attracting businesses, developing housing, and we want to continue that. I think, though, uh, we need to really emphasize the role of planning and the creating of a vision for both of those operations. Today you saw in your discussion this afternoon of the Arch and Entertainment District I think a great collaboration between redevelopment, economic development, and the planning staff, as you saw a presentation on, on a vision, a big picture for the Arch and Entertainment District along Maryland and the, and the uh, way in which the redevelopment staff and planning staff have worked together to help create that vision. I think we have an opportunity here to take a next evolutionary step. Uh, in creating uh, a department that is really first and foremost about planning and creating that vision with uh, key operations to implement that vision through redevelopment and housing. And it's with that that I've concluded that we should take that next evolutionary step and create a department of community development which would encompass the existing community planning, which is all of those operations involved in entitlements and post-development regulation, including planning both current and long-range, uh, as well as then incorporating within that the current community redevelopment and housing, which would be the last step in really blending the redevelopment, housing development, economic development function under the broad umbrella of community development. It's an approach taken in many cities. Uh, just this year, in fact, uh, Long Beach took this step of creating a Department of Community Development in the same way that I'm rec recommending we take uh, here. Uh, many cities in California uh, have all of those operating departments under one umbrella. And I really think in the long run it will create an organization that can serve us in, as I like to say, making sure that redevelopment and housing are tools for the implementation of good planning. We have the right people in the right places. I've been very proud of the staff here. They've done a tremendous job in all of those operations. And this move really isn't, isn't intended to reflect on their performance but more to look at how the structure and organization can best meet the community's needs as we start to plan for how we're going to emerge uh, from this downturn for the next uh, five to ten years. Uh, I've given you copies of the organizational charts for community planning uh, as well as for community redevelopment and housing. Uh, and on an organizational chart, it's a fairly simple merger. Uh, in fact, you see that in the expanded organizational chart. It creates an operational area for redevelopment and housing headed by what we've titled a chief assistant director, uh, which would be principally over those operational areas, but under the umbrella of the Department of Community Development. Uh, and as I foresee, it would have the uh, director of planning stepping into that uh, lead role in the new department as a director of community development. Uh, very little uh, fiscal impact. In fact, I think in the years ahead there will be even greater opportunities to look for ways in which uh, the departments and the positions uh, can collaborate and combine forces to uh, possibly create economies, but certainly to improve efficiency and coordination among the various staff people. Uh, it shouldn't have an impact on our plans currently to consolidate the operations in the uh, old police building. Uh, those will still move forward on the same time frame. Uh, so few implications except to the organization, which is really creating this broad umbrella and placing all of these operations that deal with development, uh, whether assisted by the city uh, or not, under one large umbrella. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'm proposing to do this in two phases. This is the concept. Uh, if you're supportive of that, we'll come back at a later time with the various implementation uh, and legislation to do that. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Mr. Weaver? No questions. I just think this is a good logical next step. We'll make the flow of communication work better. 
between the planners and the redevelopment and the permitting process. Uh, and we've talked about something like this for, what, eight, ten years. Better organize the city in terms of uh, how they work, because we get enough complaints from public that uh, the city is not business friendly, it takes forever to get permits, uh, I talk to one shop and then the other shop says something different. This is going a long way towards eliminating that, that conflict. When things come to us, they ought to be being spoken by one voice, per se. So I, I, I like the idea. If I can, Mr. Mayor, on that, this is, this is not to take away from what, what I think is a tremendously high level of collaboration that currently takes place between planning and redevelopment. I mean, our staff really does work tremendously well together. And again, that was exhibited today in the discussion of the Art and Entertainment District. When I first came to Glendale 13 years ago, somebody made the observation to me that it was great that we had this planning department that sort of served as a counterbalance to redevelopment, as if they were two opposing forces that, that kept each other at bay. And my reaction then was, no, that's not the way it's supposed to work that indeed uh, redevelopment and housing development really are tools for the implementation of good planning. And those two departments really needed to work very well together. We have had for a, for a number of years the right people in the right places to make that work, even though they were separate departments. I think they've worked very well. I think they can work even better, though, as a combined department with consistent leadership and the collaboration very closely among the various managers and the staff. And I think this is a good opportunity to take that next step. I agree with that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Kasakian? I'm waiting for... Oh, no, no cards on this. I'm sorry. Comments? Is there a motion that would... I'll move 8A1. Second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council members, Raymond? Yes. Yeah. Montero? Yeah. Weaver? Aye. Aaron Najarian? Yes. Okay. Thank you. What is next? That brings us back to oral communications, and this is... a. The item is not part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the council may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. And the city manager may refer the matter to the appropriate department for investigation and a report. Uh, the first speaker is Margaret Hammond. <laughs> we need a mayor. Did he call me? He's right, Margaret. Huh? You are next. Oh, yeah. No, I was... Okay. I was Teasing, my name is Margaret Hammond. Good evening again. I was teasing Steve because the door locked on me. So when I saw him coming, I ran inside and closed the door, and he was locked on me. So <laughs> he's gone. Okay, um, it's something wrong with the whatever the key card. Um, and they don't give me a key card to the city hall. What do you think of that? <laughs> um, the Patrons Club of the Glendale College is having uh, their annual luncheon fashion show, and it will be Friday, November the 5th, uh, up at the Castaways um, at 11.30. Gertrude Ness, again, will be our model uh, for another year. She's, I guess, 104 this year, and she's still going to do it. We have a silent auction, $1,000 drawing, and um, which there's limited tickets sold to that. The luncheon is $45, and if you wish tickets, we have, I think, some left uh, for the luncheon. If you call uh, Betty at 818-243-0908. Um, the last time I talked to her, there were a few tickets uh, our, of our maximum. The Glendale Coordinating, uh, Homeowners Coordinating Council is Monday night. I hope I'm right this time. It's at the Boy Scout Hall and uh, at 7 o'clock on November the 1st. Uh, and tomorrow night is uh, the Glendale Burbank Republican uh, Committee is having their uh, dinner at Clancy's. And we're having a great speaker. A dinner is available for $20. It's not, uh, you can come, it's, the meeting is free, but come. And if you want dinner, you can order it when you're there. Uh, I want to bring up again the method of notifying interested residents of changes uh, to their area by businesses such as Palladio, the billiard hall I spoke about, that the 
People who are tenants in those buildings were not notified. I spoke to people again. Yes, the owners of the building that are absentee uh, owners were notified. But what, they're not going to tell their tenants, oh, hey, we're opening up a banquet hall back here. Going to be 500 people in 35 parking spaces. So guess what? You know, uh, you're going to be living, uh, I mean, their quality of life is going to be um, for the rest of their lives in this area, in that area, they will be changed forever. Not for the best. Not when you're out there trying to circle around and find that parking spot if you come home uh, later in the evening or whatever on the weekends. Uh, it's going to. And there is a way to do it. It can be done through the water and power bill. That's the way the city of Los Angeles does it. And I was told that by one of the planners. He lives in uh, L.A., and he told me that was how they notified people, not uh, by the tax rolls, but by the uh, water and power bills uh, out of L.A. That way you would get all the residents, the tenants, in those buildings. Then they would know what's going to be happening in their area. I think it's, it's uh, unforgivable to have people suddenly say, oh my God, we didn't know this was happening. What happened? Oh, well, nobody, you didn't come to the meeting. How could they come to the meeting if they were never notified? that there was going to be a meeting. They were never notified about the Palladio, about the billiard hall, about anything that goes, they, they, if they're in apartment owners and they're there, they're not notified. Uh, and as to Arnold, I have to tell you, he was a very hard worker, um, a very nice man, real gentleman, Arnold Milner. He was on the Clean and Beautiful when I became a member of it, and you know, he did the food. He went around to all the uh, places that we have uh, that supplied food for the night on the plaza. He was the one responsible for that. And he even did it this year. As ill as he was, he went out and uh, contacted all those people. He was a really dedicated volunteer in this city. And yes, we, he did, uh, under him, uh, we did accomplish a lot. The, market, the baskets being put off, the graffiti being done, recycling, uh, the poster campaign in the schools. He was part of all of that. So we do have to, uh, some people do it quietly and others do it noisily. Um, and, and that's all I do have to say about that part. The other thing is I'd like to know what is happening, what investigation is going to be done about the low-income housing the way that the uh, uh, cost went up and then it was in the paper that uh, the, the uh, construction itself was not up to par. Is there going to be an inspection of that? Is there going to be some, uh, somebody looking at that investigation? Thank you. Thank you. Judith Shea, followed by Mike Mohill. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. My name is Judith Shea. My address is 4104 Lowell Avenue in La Crescenta. Um, I originally moved to Glendale in uh, 1985. Um, I was a former elected uh, county commissioner under Roy Wilson, Community Action Agency, for six years. Uh, I worked for Amtrak Purchasing Agent for the West Coast. Uh, Amtrak is a quasi-governmental agency, so I'm used to working with governmental agencies for the last 14 years. Um, I've been retired because I got hit by a truck and broke my neck in two places, my back in three. Uh, and more currently, this last year, I got a staph infection at a hospital and uh, had open heart surgery as a result of the staph infection. But anyway, um, I have been, I bought a house in 2006. I think Mr. Weaver would be interested in this. Um, I, I, I understood, you I'd know. like us to go get him. <laughs> yeah, that would be great, because um, some of the things he said um, are very applicable. Um, I don't want to name names, because you know what, I have a lot of respect for anybody that works for the city, and um, just everybody. I mean, really, I know you work hard. And uh, I have a son that's been in business here for 26 years. I have 11 grandchildren. Six of them um, went through the school systems here. I still have four in the school systems. Um, that's Glendale Unified School District. Okay, so anyway, um, I wasn't posted on a lot of notices because I had to live in a warmer climate because of breaking my neck and back and couldn't move for a couple of years. And um, so more recently, I started being noticed about the actions on this house that my son lived in um, more in 2009. And at that time, I jumped in 
and I um, started working diligently on getting anything that needed to be rectified done. Um, so anyway, there was uh, a number of violations, and I definitely um, understand that um, we need to fix those things. Um, back on uh, June of '09, we submitted to DRB Design Review Board plans and specifications and so forth based upon numerous hearings with the planning department. Okay, um, we finally got a hearing on 12110. That's six months since we submitted the uh, correct the design and everything. Then we were given corrections. Um, one that was probably the most blatant was uh, I personally, because of all these delays, went without the architect. I went with the architect a couple times to planning, but I went this time without him. And I said, uh, is the guy I'm working with okay? You know, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? Um, he said, they were to told me, oh, yeah, he's fine. Everything's fine. He's done a lot of work in this city. And then when I got the review by the design review board, it said uh, the first correction was to hire somebody else. Anyway, we did that. I hired another licensed architect, submitted plans, and again, um, you know, on 9-13, um, we've been waiting for a hearing with the Design Review Board. Um, right now, the October 14th meeting was canceled, the October 28th meeting was canceled, um, so the next meeting is November 18th. So I'm told to do everything in a timely manner. 30 days, 15 days, whatever you require, and I try to live up to those standards. But I've had to wait six months for um, hearings with DRB. Um, like I said, every single thing has been thoroughly gone through with the planning department first. We have gone from a house on a lot, 19,000 square feet, okay, um, a lot. We had to decrease the size of it substantially. Um, it decreases the value maybe three to four hundred thousand dollars at least. Um, so anyway, then um, on six nine it was very dramatic. Um, city personnel came, a bunch of them, and they even had a search warrant and two police officers. And I'm like, hey, I got open heart surgery. You know, I'm not going to beat you guys up. Uh, what do you need a search warrant for? Anyway, um, they did this inspection and everything. And then on June 21st of this year, they gave me a six-page correction list um, with 72 hours to fix. Notice to abate with 72 hours to fix. So I went out and I got me a license, which I already had, a licensed electrician, a plumber license, um, civil engineer, the arboretist, the, you know, all this on a weekend because we were going to have this ex parte hearing on Monday. Well, um, they did, you know, continue the ex parte hearing, um, but uh, we're still under the gun. Um, like I said, we've resubmitted everything, and oh my God, it's over with. Oh, that was quick. That was five minutes? Wow. Uh, but anyway, I really am happy that you're consolidating. We did that at Amtrak and at Santa Fe Railroad as well. And um, I'm looking forward to getting your help. I really need your help, 100%, and want to cooperate and get all these not challenges resolved. Please help us. Thank you. Thank you. I do have lots of information if you want it. Stick around. <laughs> Stick okay. around. In fact, may I direct you to our planning director, Mike Mohill, followed by Asatur Bagdasarian. Good evening, Mayor Najeri and council members. My name is Mike Mohill, long-term resident of Glendale. This afternoon, Councilman Draymond says to me, after I asked him if I had him, did he have a minute to speak with me, he said, no, not with you, Mr. Mohill. This is how my councilman has treated me, a concerned citizen of this city, I've been in this city over 35 years, graduate of Glendale High School, 1960. Mr. Draymond was instrumental in having oral communication return or have it at the end of the evening. Right now, if the people in the audience notice, there are only seven people in the audience to listen to me. And there are 14 officials up on the dais. What does that tell you? Mr. Draymond did that. 
He was all for the people when he ran for election in 2007. And this is how he treats the public. We may not agree, Mr. Draymond, on Rock Haven, on wages, on your neon art museum, your smart meters. <clears throat> but if you can't take the heat, as they would say to Mr. Nixon, get out of the kitchen. Maybe being a councilman is too much for you. You want to run for re-election, and this is how you treat one of your constituents. I even voted for you. And I'll remind you that when you run for re-election next year. But Mr. Eric, you know, I'm surprised you didn't call me dumb-headed, dumbfounded. That's your usual words for the people you don't agree with. Now I will talk what I wanted to speak Mr. about Mohan, this evening. you've got usually some great ideas, and that's what we'd like to hear about. Okay, thank you. Let's talk about paying more money to get the best of employees. Right? I'm all ears. Thank you. In 2009 election cycle, while campaigning, I met a retired Glendale City Department head who told me the city needed to pay more money for the city workers if we want to attract the best employees. I asked myself, what is the definition of the best employees? I'm best, what the heck? Well, we have time after time paid more and received less. Today, we are, we are questions, today there are questions as to whether buildings inspectors are doing their jobs. Why did advanced development investment and affordable housing developer want more money for their project after the city approved the initial contracts? Why did our city manager question the developer's additional needs? Today, we have managers twisting the fact to protect their turf. Again, why did our city manager notice something was wrong when ADI wanted more? Why, why, why? Why were cost overruns and short-term borrowing invoked in order to pay cost of this project? According to city documents, the city is retaining Burke, Williams, and Sorensen to assist general counsel in matters related to advanced development and investment. Why did only three council members vote for this law firm and two council members did not? Guess the city needs to spend more money on legal services to protect the city even though, as they tell us, there were no problems on this project. Councilman John Draymond recently pushed and was instrumental to have the city reorganize the city planning department against the wishes of a few city activists. Can you help me understand the building permit process, please? Does a remodel, a repair, a renovation of a flooded dwelling require a permit if electrical plumbings are changed? It is true the resident in Unit 328 of your building, Mr. Draymond, received a ceased and deceased order for interior remodeling work in process without permits or inspection. How did that happen? I recall going before this diet several months ago, stating that considering how much time and energy council members spend, they should, should pay the public officials more money. Council activists came up to me later and said, Mike, you're crazy. These council members were paid too much, and some were 10 percenters. I said, what do you mean by 10 percenters? They laughed at me, like kickbacks, Mike. Where were you Thank born? You. Under a rock? Thank you, Mr. Mohel. Uh, you, you missed the last for, for the best. I have a feeling this is going to be an installment. Uh, well, I only have like, seriously. can I get 30 more seconds? No, I can't. Come there's back only, next there's only seven people in the audience. Come back next week, Mr. Mohel. Okay, well, now we know, no. now we know why oral communication. Well, I know we, we know why oral people communication Thank you. is at the end of the evening. Asatur Bagdasarian. But there's no audience. Asatur Bagdasarian followed by CR Legal and then Roberta Medford. Uh, good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor Aran Nigerian and the uh, Councillor members. Uh, I've been here before uh, for my house case uh, was fraud. Uh, I live in Glendale over 30 years and uh, uh, I am continuing my case.
case uh, with Honorable Judge Dole. And I would like to know how can uh, you help homeowner in Glendale and my case. Uh, I just ask uh, chief, chief uh, police investigate homeowners and fraud in my case. And uh, possible there is uh, so many cases like my case. Uh, In my case, uh, Honorable Sheriff Baka, uh, he knows about my case, and uh, uh, he didn't evict me because um, there is no jurisdiction. Juris jurisdiction. Uh, Honorable Judge Dole uh, did not have jurisdiction and uh, order uh, order to evict me uh, because also because I have a remove case from state to federal and if you evict homeowner from their house their home without jurisdiction and uh, proper legal authority it is uh, kidnapping if you force homeowner. Uh, Honorable Sheriff Baka, he refused to evict because uh, court order was, wasn't proper, uh, proper and wasn't illegal. Uh, Chief of Police Sheriff, uh, Chief of Police should investigate my case and a uh, case like my case also. Uh, simple solution. Honorable, uh, if Honorable Chief uh, uh, Sheriff Baka uh, knows it is illegal uh, judgment, why, why Chief uh, Police cannot investigate SRT Partner LLC. Uh, thousand of ev eviction uh, possible there is in this country. Uh, why Chief uh, Sheriff uh, Honorable Sheriff Baka did not evict uh, me immediately uh, because there was. Uh, judgment, uh, Honorable Judge Dole in third illegal order. SRT partner LLC did fraud and they did to other uh, house owner also. I have some proof. And uh, I would like to know if I, uh, I am a citizen of this country over 30 years, this is my country, my land, my house, and I, I am spending my life here. I would like to uh, get protection uh, for myself, uh, my case, and also people like me. There are some people, they do uh, fraud, they do wrong things. I would like to uh, ask you, please help me to uh, investigate this case and also um, cases like me, my case, and they destroy my family life. It's that's number one important things. They dis by purchasing this house, they destroy my family completely. You can send somebody to see my life. You saw before. And uh, can, you can send somebody to check my house and my life, see how I am suffering. Yeah. I, will, I will appreciate uh, for investigate Thanks. and also for your time for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. CR Legal, Senior, followed by Roberta Medford.
Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I'm quite impressed with an auto mechanic who can expound upon the integrity of this country and this city and the laws that he understands them as a simple auto mechanic. And maybe you're trying to make sense out of some of what he's saying, but I think he did such a good job. Maybe it doesn't need much clarification. But I want to go on a bigger scope of what's going on in this country. And I want to start with my church proclamation that they issued recently, the Mormon church issue, a church proclamation, that they have their issues, but the one thing they got right is that we need to turn our focus back on the families and our communities, because that's the building block of any country. And I saw a movie on Sunday with another church group about Isaiah warning Judea about the trouble that was coming from the Babylonians and how they needed to to repent and turn from their ways. <clears throat> and we don't spend much time thinking about spiritual matters because we're all involved in our lives and we, we take for granted the gift of life that God gave us all. <clears throat> but eventually it's gone and then we have judgment. But while we're here, we try to do the good that we can, especially if we are in position of power. And my colleague made reference to Sheriff Bach. I've met him personally and been in his home and we've had conversation. And one of the things he said recently at a meeting of church goers, he said, you know, I have raw power and I can choose to use my power for good or I can use it for evil. And he said, but I have raw power. I can make these decisions. And apparently Sheriff Bach or one of his sergeants made a decision not to enforce an illegal order that would amount to kidnapping. That's very serious. Anytime a sitting highest ranking police official in the country made a decision out of millions that he's not going to do the dirty deed. He's not going to help destroy a family in your city that you have the authority to protect. And you say, well, how do I have the authority to protect? Mayor, you're a lawyer. You know right from wrong. You know when you have two left shoes. Councilman Draymond, you could ask the chief of police by yourself to investigate a particular case and get back to you. I'm not saying you have to, but I'm saying you could. Councilman Friedman, once I heard you say we should get an ordinance and figure out a way to protect citizens from having bottles stolen out of their trash receptacles. And you said something to the effect about we should bear arms, and, you know, but you didn't mean it that way, I'm sure. The Second Amendment does say we can bear arms. But what I'm saying is that we are concerned about some crimes, but I think we should all be concerned about the more serious one, and that is the destruction of our cities and the destruction of our government and our country and how we've been destroyed. Because some smart Wall Street executives got smart and, did, and produced derivatives, all these mortgages that were packaged and they didn't know who owned them, the notes and whatever. And when that financial bubble burst, it sent all these court cases to the courts and they don't know what to do. They just say, let them all suffer and get rid of them and let's start fresh. <clears throat> but there is a separation of state and federal and removal does that. Removal takes a case from state and gives it to federal. And when you violate that, it's very serious. The Tenth Amendment gives separation of state laws and from federal. And you got a case now dealing with the ordinance. In fact, council members, I think you're correct. I think the state overstepped their bounds and tried to dictate to cities how they should deal with their solar energy. And I think it takes courage to say no and stand up to someone. And Mayor, you being a lawyer, you're probably more cautious that you know that you can't violate other jurisdiction. But sometimes you can when it's unconstitutional and when they overstep their authorities. And that's similar case that Bagdation has. The state judge overstepped his authority and he knew it. He just decided he had raw power and he chose to use it for evil. And what Bagdation is asking you, if you are willing to see the suffering of your citizens in this city, is to take a bold step and say, you know, the buck stops with us. We will start to investigate, and we will give at least one relief. And I remind you, on August 31st, you gave the chief of police $150,000 to, to do something. 
I ask that you do something. Peace be with you. Thank you. Roberta Medford. Hi, I'm Roberta Medford. I'm a resident of the Glendale, of the Montrose area of Glendale. Um, I, I applaud you, Mayor Nigerian, for your support of locals who are working to ban puppy mill sa dog sales in Glendale. Your explanation, as quoted in the Glendale News Press yesterday, said that, and I quote, Glendale residents are discriminating and informed. I agree. Glendale has moved beyond the state and rather boring city of even 15 years ago when I moved here. That is why I was inspired after reading your statement in the paper yesterday and I came here to join this august company in oral communications to check in with you and again ask you to become a member of Mayors for Peace. I think the discriminating and informed residents of Glendale would back you up on this. The sole goal of Mayors for Peace is the total elimination of nuclear weapons. And for our viewers, I would say you can go to www.mayorsforpeace.org and find out lots of information that I've already provided, Mayor Nigerian. This is an idea whose time has come. Hundreds of former heads of state, foreign ministers, national security advisors, and military commanders all over the world agree that only getting rid of all nuclear weapons will keep us safe from an accidental or deliberate terrorist use of these horrible weapons. And these are not wild-eyed radicals. They are very mainstream, and they think, as I do, that this goal is obtainable. When my daughter Elizabeth Queen and I spoke here at this uh, same body on August 6th of this year and presented dozens of names of other local residents who support us in this request, at that time there were 154 U.S. cities whose mayors had stood up in support of this goal. At the time of my follow-up email to you in July, which I do hope uh, you get the chance to reply to eventually, there were 160 U.S. mayor members. Today, as of today on their website, there are 161 U.S. mayors. Worldwide membership has grown since last April from 350 city mayors to four, uh, excuse me, from 3,500 city mayors to 4,208 mayors. Um, let's not be the last city to join Mayors for Peace. So I'm not the only dreamer here. We're all over the world. Mayors are signing up, and so can Glendales. Please save the humans and the puppies, and be a mayor for peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. I don't have any other cards for oral... Um, no, I don't have any other cards for oral communication. Mr. Weaver. I knew there was something I wanted to ask at uh, Council Comments. You, know, you and I both were up there when Renee was um, having his big coming out party for adopting animals from shelters rather than the puppy mill. And that comment today, I was going to ask, can we legislate that in Glendale? Can we pass ordinance or anything that says any place in Glendale selling animals or putting them up for adoption, they cannot use puppy mills? Legislate that away? I'd have to we'd have to take a look at it to see if there are any preemption issues. Yeah, I, I wish you would because, well, I mean, there's so many animals being put to sleep in the shelters rather than the puppy mills. I, I watch Animal Planet every day. I see so many examples of animals from the puppy mills that are born defective and whatever. Um, people that do it don't care anything about the animals. It's just the profit. I think if there's a way we could stop that in this city, it would force the sellers to go to the adoption, to the uh, shelters, and get some really good animals. Every animal I've ever had came out of a shelter. And they know when you've saved them. They just know. That's all I can tell you. So if you can check that out, find out if there's any preemption, if we can do it, that'd be great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Draymond. Well, let me see how much of this I can get in before Mr. Garcia jumps out of his skin. Ooh, Maybe you can throw your arms around it, Mr. Weaver. 
Um, the reason I would be very cautious about uh, pursuing that little avenue is because the city uh, contracts with an animal shelter that is not a no-kill shelter, and it's an expensive contract. And although, uh, as most people know, all of my pets have been adopted from uh, animal shelters as well, um, it seem, would seem like a quite a, a double standard. Say we we don't want to see animals euthanized, but at the same time we contract with an animal shelter that euthanizes animals routinely. And we have an animal shelter right here in the city, which is the only non-kill shelter in the entire region. I would support uh, what Renee is doing, and I do, plus, plus the other pet shops in the city of Glendale that have been doing what he's now doing for years and years and years, which is uh, take animals from shelters and adopt them out, and, um, and rather than buying, uh, buying pets uh, for resale from mills, and also many shelters for generations in the city not selling dogs and cats in their store at all. Well, and those other pet shops are. There's a number of them, but I think the longest standing of those is Anderson's Pet Shop. Doing that for, well, they don't sell animals. They don't sell dogs and cats. And uh, that is what they are committed to doing. So I'm glad that Renee joins those ranks. But, uh, but uh, you know, if we want to start by uh, uh, talking about or agendizing such a thing, we might want to talk about our existing contract with a shelter that routinely euthanizes animals. What I wanted to do was get the puppy mills out of Maybe we'll, to do with anything else. Mr. Mayor, maybe it would be easier for us to look at the legal issue, and then if yeah, that's something that yeah. we actually have authority, then a council member can then request that it be agendized. I think there is a desire, and maybe, as, as you said, maybe you could clear the legal yeah. hurdles first, and yeah. then we can maybe nothing decide how we, to want to, how we want to address okay. this item. Why well, I have a comment, but I don't. I don't. Exactly. Would you like Pardon. me to finish? No, I'm, I'm, I'm being so nice. Here. I'm being so nice. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to two things, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. One is, did um, the speaker uh, on Lowell uh, Avenue get some direction? And if I may, Mr. Mayor, members of council, one, I, I do think she spoke with us on and they extracted traded con contact information. This is actually a matter that is in our office litigation. Um, and we are, our office as well as uh, Mr. Agani's staff are working with uh, her attorney and her, her uh, architect and her son to try to get that, that result. So that we are, there, is a, there is a process for that and we'll, we'll follow up and if there's anything to report to council, we'll bring that back. Thank you. Thank you. The other thing is, uh, I guess I should respond in part to Mr. Uh, Mohill. Uh, boy, even something as recent as this afternoon, Mr. Mohill, you can't quote correctly. You have so much trouble with facts. Uh, you asked me to take some time with you, and I said to you, not get away from me, or I'm not interested, or I won't talk to you. I said, I'm really not interested in talking to you right now. It's exactly what I said to you. Of course, what Mr. Mohill doesn't mention is that not only has this council member, but any number of other council members up on this dais have spent innumerable amounts of time with him. I myself have spent hours and hours with Mr. Mohill, even with formal meetings in my office where I listened to him and answered his questions for hours, literally. I also see him routinely at uh, here at the chambers. Also, I hear more from Mr. Mohill in these chambers than I hear from my own colleagues on the dais here, because he is here to impart his wisdom on topics over and over and over and over, day after day after day, which is his right to do. But it, it also doesn't mean that just because he sticks his face in mine and says, I want to talk to you, that at that moment I have to, want to, or am able to uh, indulge him in a, a conversation on the subject of his choice. Um, but furthermore, I've watched you, Mr. Mohill, over the years. I've watched you catcall from these chambers at speakers at the podium. I've watched you yelling at presenters on the stage at Unity Fest, as you did this year. I've watched you attempt to disrupt our city's Christmas parade, as you did tried to do last year when you were yanked out by, um, by um, a security and escorted away. I've listened to you insult people at this podium, people of Armenian descent, people of Hispanic descent. 
I even sat here and listened to you. In fact, it was the first time I ever heard from you sit here and say that you voted for me and Mr. Weaver because we weren't Armenian. I also listened to you here at the podium pointing at volunteers, mature ladies from the Armenian Relief Society, and tell, tell the city council that we should make them wash toilets in order for, at the, at the Glendale Civic and other places, in order for us to consider whether or not we would reduce rates for their rentals. I know, I've listened to you a lot, and I've seen you a lot, Mr. Mohill. I hear you all the time. What I haven't seen you do, though, Mr. Mohill, is I haven't seen you feed the homeless like people on this dais have at events for, for at, at the holiday seasons or at events for Path Achieve. I haven't seen you volunteer for city projects like so many people in this chamber do uh, and out in the community do on a regular basis. And I haven't seen you volunteer at community functions. You don't do those things. You don't participate in that way. Yet, you've let everybody know you're running for city council, and that's really what this is all about. You are here. You're an extension of one of our former colleagues, Mr. Yosefian, and you're here yammering away night after night, afternoon after afternoon. You're here as an extension of Mr. Barry Allen, here yammering away, blathering away. And yes, uh, I am quite respectful to people who are of earnest intentions and purpose who come here with their issues and who stop me and my colleagues out in the community all the time. Um, I'm one of those council members who will actually walk somebody to their car and sit and talk to them for ages uh, as long as they have something to say. Uh, I'm easy to find. Anybody can find me and they know where to find me and I'm, I'm not difficult, difficult to reach. But uh, that doesn't mean, Mr. Mohill, that you simply coming to a meeting, insulting someone on this dais or someone in city staff every time you come to the podium, that I have to sit and engage you in a conversation simply because you get in my face as I'm walking from here to my office and say, I want to talk to you, mister. Well, guess what, Mr. Mohill, this afternoon, I didn't have time to talk to you. I had other things I needed to do. So I would turn it around on you, as was said to Mr. I guess Mr. Nixon you were quoting. If it's too hot for you, Mr. Mohill, get out of the kitchen. Mr. Mayor, I just added that the reason he wasn't, we were all going back into closed session. You didn't have time to talk to him at that time. Friedman. I'm sorry, I won't even attempt to follow that. Who wouldn't? <laughs> Mr. Quintero. Um, uh, the only thing I would like to say is we're not going to continue down this road during oral communications and have insults, uh, individual ad hominem attacks on council members. So if you want to talk about issues, and I'm not, not directing this only to you, Mr. Mohill, uh, but anyone else out there, we're going to maintain a level of decorum. And if you want to criticize position on issues, which sometimes you do, or criticize uh, the actual items that are going on in the city, fine. But I'm not going to let anyone complain anymore about a council member who either looked at them the wrong way or was short with them or wouldn't grant them any time. There's too many other things that are uh, legitimate and uh, valuable to spend your time on, and that's a little little hint for anyone out there who wants to address the public. Talk about the issues. Uh, you, know, you can call us idiots for voting a certain way. That's fine. We're used to that. Uh, but, but don't say you looked at me the wrong way. You didn't have time for me. You spoke to me curtly or turned your head. So uh, to the extent that I can and to the extent that the city attorney lets me, I'm going to interrupt those starting the ad hominem attacks and uh, urge you to keep your comments on the issues before this city and before this council. Uh, that's all I have to say. I and think, Mr. Weaver? I'd like to move we adjourn in the memory of um, Mr. Arnold Milner and Mr. Harutun Yaretsian. And uh, happy birthday, happy 16th birthday to my son Alexander. Oh, oh take him to dinner. He's, I'm hoping to get home to cut a cake with him. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there a second?